Great, take it away, Tobias. Uh, thank you very much. And my talk is on belief programming in probabilistic environments. And the motivation behind belief programming is partial observability. Because as soon as computer systems interact with the real world, there's usually some kind of partial observability involved. For example, if we have a drone which would like to determine its position, then we have to distinguish between the measured position, which could include measurement and accuracy, and the actual position of the drone. And this problem was addressed for non-deterministic uncertainty by Atkinson and Carbon with belief programming. And our work was to lift this approach to probabilistic uncertainty. So the key idea of belief programming is to use unobservable variables, which are variables where the value is not accessible to the developer, to kind of model partial observability. And this means that the program has to distinguish its program state between variable assignments and belief states. Variable assignments, I assume everybody's familiar with, they just assign values to variables, and notably they also assign values to the unobservable variables. So if you want to keep track of partial observability, then we use belief states, which are probability distributions over variable assignments, which means at runtime the program keeps track of the probability distribution of the real state, which well, what are the possibilities for the real state to be in? As for belief programs themselves, we make use of all the standard imperative program, imperative program statements, but notably, none of these statements are allowed to interact with unobservable variables. If we want to interact with unobservable variables, then we need to use these new statements right here, which I will now introduce briefly. Um, first of all, we have the choose statement. The choose statement samples from discrete probability distributions to assign values to unobservable variables, which is very, diff uh, very similar to a sample in normal probabilistic programming language. And this allows us to model the behavior of the unobservable environment, which if you look at this right here, we first have a true statement, which to the variable S assigns with a probability of one half the value true, otherwise false, giving us this belief state. And then we can use a second true statement to set the value of T dependent on the value of S, which means that the First variable assignment splits into two possible outcomes, depending on whether or not T chooses true or false. And the same thing, of course, also happens with the other uh, variable assignment, giving us this overall belief state, which is a bit more complex. Second of all, we have the observe statement, which allows us to observe the value of an unobservable variable. And this process is very, very similar to conditioning the belief state in classical probabilis uh, probability theory. So we have this very complex belief state, which has different possible values for x, and we then make an observation which, for example, tells us that x is equal to 2. Well, then what we can do is we can just, uh, we can just discard all variable assignments where x is not equal to 2 and renormalize our probability distribution. And again, this is very similar to probabilistic conditioning. And this allows us to very compactly model behavior of partial observability, because, for example, if we want to work with an imprecise measurement, well, we can first use a true statement to describe how the um, measurement is derived from the thing we are trying to measure. In this, uh, in this case, it is in the altitude. And then we observe the measurement to automatically dis uh, condition the belief state on the altitude. Finally, we have the infer statement, which can be understood as a generalized if statement, meaning that rather than checking if a condition holds or not, we check the probability that a condition holds, and if that particular probability falls into any interval, then we execute C1, otherwise C2. And if we take all of these things together, uh, we can write a belief program like this, and we already had a lot of medical examples today, so I'm going to follow suit. And I want you to imagine that you are a doctor, and a patient shows up, and he maybe has a disease, and you need to decide whether or not you prescribe medicine to the patient. So what you do, of course, is you model it as a belief program, and the first step of that is to model the disease, where with a probability of 10%, the patient in this case has the disease. Then we use this imprecise measurement to model a test on the disease, which is correct 95% of the time. And finally, we make our decision with an inferred statement, where we estimate the probability that the patient has the disease. And if that probability is greater than some threshold Q, we prescribe medicine, here modeled by setting M to true, and otherwise we don't prescribe medicine, so we set M to false. Now, at our chair, we are not quite programming languages people, we are more so program verification people. So a very interesting question for us was not just, well, does this infer make sound judgments, does it get the right probability distribution and so on, but more so, does the program as a whole pass the inferences and 
interacting with all the classical program statements act correctly with whatever meaning of correctness we have for this particular program. And so what we did is we developed a weakest pre-expectation calculus. And the input to this weakest pre-expectation calculus are generalized predicates. So usually predicates map program states to either true or false. But if we are working with probabilities, that is not enough. So we generalized by not just mapping to true or false, but instead we map to any positive real value and also infinity for technical reasons. Um, this then means that we cannot just reason about, well, does this proposition hold or not, but also what is the probability that a, that a proposition holds or not, or what is the expected value of a variable right now, which gives us a lot more freedom in our analysis. Now, um, the weakest pre-expectation calculus itself is a function WP, which takes in a belief program, takes in a predicate, and then it gives us another predicate. And in terms of soundness, we want this weakest pre-expectation calculus to do the following. So if we get a belief program and we get a predicate, then the outcome of the weakest pre-expectation is the expected value of the predicate at termination. So we can make kind of a decision whether we want to look at all possible execution paths by executing the program a whole lot and then get the expected value over all the terminal states, or we can plug it into our weakest pre-expectation and given an input, we can kind of predict what the outcome of the program would be in expectation. If we now take a look again at our example from before, then we can use this as our post-expectation. So we are asking for the probability that we make the right treatment decision, we pres prescribe medicine if and only if the patient is sick. We can then apply the weakest pre-expectation calculus to get this particular expression. And this particular expression is derived fully syntactically and symbolically, so we don't have to transform our program in any way. And now we can see that this weakest pre-expectation is parameterized in Q. So depending on which value for Q we choose, we get a different outcome and how likely are we to make the right treatment decision. And if we take a closer look at the Iverson brackets, we will get an interval for optimal values of Q to maximize our likelihood to make the right treatment decision. And for example, one possible optimal value would be one half. And um, this is everything I wanted to present. I mean. As a final remark, something I think is particularly interesting about belief programming is that we now have belief programming for probabilistic settings as well as non-deterministic settings. So something we are trying to do right now is to combine those two and get one unified approach for both probabilistic and non-deterministic belief uh, uncertainty. And that's about it what I had to say. I, of course, also have a very a poster which I worked, worked very hard on. So. If you have any questions, you can talk to me in the poster session.